You're on a plane to Tokyo, to LA and to places I don't know. And every time you're leaving home, I hate it, but I know it's not for long. When you travel down the coast, when you look across the shore, when you hear the ocean roar, I'm waiting for your call. When you make it to the island, sand beneath your feet. When I look at the horizon, well, you think of me, you are a traveler. G'day, viewers, Petro Tai. Well, I'm up here in Darwin, as you probably know, and uh, we're on our way to um, the Kimberley. So, the boat that we've just uh, last three or four days, we've been packing the boats, getting supplies, and here's the boats here, there's the cars. Took us for three or four days to get everything uh, together and we're ready to go. So we're on our way to Kalinara over the WA border there. It's gonna take about eight or nine hours. It's about 900,000 Ks. So uh, this is the start of the, uh, of the journey. The epic Kimberley journey. So hang on, stay on board and uh, come with Pedro. And hopefully it should be um, it should be a pretty good bloody vlog. Anyway, we'll see you on the road. COVID uh, permit process, which didn't take too long. Um, and now uh, here we are, we're just uh, filling up the cars <coughs> with juice in Karanara. Um, do a little bit of shopping and then head down to uh, Wyndham where I'll launch the, uh, the boats for the uh, 10 day Kimberley adventure. So we'll see you down there. Um, not a bad day. It's been raining, we've got a fair bit of rain. Had a fair bit of rain actually. Um, we're probably gonna get a bit, bit rained on up at the Kimberley, I'd say. Still towards the end of the wet season. Um, but it is what it is. So uh, anyway, we'll see you down at Wyndham. So I've met up with the other boys, there's four boats that's going up the Kimberley. There's boat one, boat two, and boat three. And boat four. All the boys having a bit of a briefing before we hit, uh, hit the road to um, Wyndham. So there'll be eight of us. Some good experience amongst us, not including me. But I'll, uh, I'll learn a fair bit, I reckon. Anyway, like I said, I'll see you down at Wyndham. Well, here we are at Wyndham. Just drove in. As you can see the car over there, viewers. And uh, you, can't, uh, you can't go through Wyndham without stopping at the big croc. Pretty renowned, the big croc for uh, for Wyndham. Getting closer and closer. Okay, it's launching time. Look at the launch area in Wyndham. Two boats are already in. Just about put our boat in now. Apparently there's a big lookout up there called Five Ways Lookout or something. I'll check that out when we get back in 10 days. Anyway, the usual warning signs for crocodiles.
Oh well, we've got our boat in. Really crocky around here. Water looks like the, uh, the Yarra River in Melbourne. Anyway, just good to get the other boat in now. And we're on our way. Weather's looking a bit cloudy. It's about 30, uh, oh, I'd have to be 32, 33 degrees, something like that. Pretty warm, pretty still, no wind, plenty of cloud cover. Anyway, not far away now. Sandy? Um. Six years I've been in the desert And every night I dream of the sea They say home is where you find it Will this place ever satisfy me For I come from the song for a people we always lived by the sea Now I'm out here west of Bella Spring Well, that was a pretty rough night. Massive day. The first day in the Kimberley. Thank God the sun's out. about quarter to six in the morning and this is where we ended up on the beach there's all the boys sleeping over there my mum was absolutely soaked so I got wet as anyway what a beautiful spot there's a few crocodiles in the water there this last night about three crocodiles but can't see them anymore, but the tide's gone out, so we're stuck here for a couple of hours before the tide come back, comes back in. But what a beautiful morning. Absolutely beautiful. So we found this gem of a spot. There's Barramundi literally jumping out of the water. So Louis is going to do the first cast of the trip. Let's see how we go. We've got the, guy, the cane toad having a bit of a swim. No cane toads in WA, apparently. Well, they're here, and they swim. So welcome to the second day of proceedings out here in the Kimberley. Just left camp. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. I had to wait for the tide to come in so we could uh, launch the uh, the boats. We just uh, on that beach over there in the distance. There, viewers. Kiss a wave, Louis. There's Louis, the uh, the captain. 
Yeah, Captain have Louis. to be out in the water, going up Mangrove Creek. Hopefully we'll uh, get some good barrow, some jacks. Spend the day on the water. Hopefully the rain will stay away. Yeah. That's our number one enemy at the moment, is the, uh, is the rain. But it is the wet season. We'll continue forward. Glad you can see that, viewers. Uh, there's a couple of dingoes over there near our camp. Pretty cool. Two dingoes. It's like a bigger one, a, a young one. Pretty timid though. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Couple of dingoes. Pretty skinny. We left some rubbish and some bags on the uh, at the camp. We're probably after that. I'm gonna start throwing some uh, plastics around. Start throwing those around. Well here we are, it's been more or less pissing down with rain all day, whose idea was it to come up to the Kimberley in the wet season? Anyway, we found a little uh, hidey hole in the mangroves, which has given us a little bit of, uh, little bit of cover. Um, this but it more or less hasn't stopped raining all day, we're actually soaked through to the skin. I don't think I've had this t-shirt ever dry since I've been here. Kept wringing it out. That's one of the mattresses that just got soaked and wet, so we can't use that. So slowly, we're just all getting drenched. But anyway, it's onwards and upwards. We'll probably have a couple of bourbon and cokes and forget about the rain. The fishing's been uh, okay. We haven't caught anything yet. But um, we'll persist. Apparently, the, uh, it's a little bit cool, actually. It's like Melbourne weather up here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit cool. So the water might be a little bit cool for the, the barra. Um, but we'll persevere. Anyway, it's bourbon and coke time. Oh, great catch, Pete. Well, viewers, we've finally got one. A barra, a barra Mundi. What do you reckon, Louis? It's uh, how how big is it? Oh, it'd be probably uh, 65, I reckon. Uh, maybe maybe 70, 65, probably about 65, 70. Oh, well, beautiful eating. Great catch. You beauty. So we just absolutely just accidentally caught a croc. We're going for the barra, and the croc's got on the end of the line. Only a small one. There it is there. Just trying to get the uh, lure out of it now. Wrap them around him. Get those flies, G. Get the uh, lure out of the croc's mouth somehow.
Hey, a little croc, little baby croc, so we'll just get the, uh, hopefully, have to use a knife or something to get, get the pliers. Not pliers, or do you want a knife? Cut him off. What's going on, Pete? Well, I've just um, hooked up a croc, we're going for the barrow, and uh, the croc's come in and uh, gone for the lure. So, uh, it's only a little croc, um, but obviously uh, you've got to give it a bit of respect, and um, we're just going to cut the line. You're going to poke his eye out with a knife. Cut the line, <laughs> so. Yeah, just watch those, watch those pointy, watch the pointy end, mate. Let him go, let him go. He's more. 